And that's it. We're at minus 4.38% state of charge. We have 200 watt hours at the bottom of the battery pack. And let's plug this thing in, shall we? Hello and welcome to a beautiful day here in Northern Colorado. You join me at the Loveland Supercharger where it is currently t-shirt weather. We were down below zero degrees Fahrenheit last week and now finally nice and warm. Today we're gonna be looking at the degradation of our Tesla Model 3. Forgive some of the noise of trucks going by on the highway. <laughs> we're gonna be looking at how much range we have lost how much battery capacity we have lost. I have to, you know, sort of dispel some myths here in our testing procedures. I'm going to explain how we're going to go about this, but I do want to say the weather is nice. It's the perfect day for it. It's about 62, 63 degrees Fahrenheit. It's wonderful battery testing temperature. I'm DC fast charging the car to 100%. I'll run you through everything. Let's jump in the car where the noise will be less and we can start digging into how much capacity this car has lost since new. You join me at the supercharger now. You can see some data here from Scan My Tesla. And what I want to do is go through some of this. So we're at 91.5% state of charge. DC fast charging, of course, we're doing about 33 kilowatts into the battery pack. Um, what else do we have? We have... Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, some other things. Battery's really warm. So that's what I wanted for this test. It actually got up to 62 degrees Celsius peak cell temperature. And I just thought that was incredibly warm. I've never seen this car go much above 55, but I haven't been logging a lot of the new software updates and it's been winter. So maybe this is just getting back into warm weather, but 62 degrees Celsius is a lot for a battery pack. So I'm surprised about that. There's a lot of things we need to dispel when we talk about looking at battery degradation over time. And so we will talk about that today, but I do want to mention this car has had 43 megawatt hours put into the pack, which is just crazy. You'll also see here on the screen, it shows 40 megawatt hours, megawatt hours pulled out. And of course there's always losses and inefficiencies and things like that. Uh, let's head over to this all tab because I want to talk about uh, what it says here on nominal full pack and then nominal uh, full pack when new. And so this nominal full pack number is pretty much from what the car is guesstimating from 100% to where it won't move anymore. There is a, a buffer of three kilowatt hours right here that pretty much we need to subtract from the nominal full pack energy. So the car is predicting about 63.8 kilowatt hours of usable energy in this when new. Now keep in mind, this car has had a really awkward last few months of use. It sat at low state of charge, 40 to 50% for sort of storage, and then it gets pulled out once in a while. So this is relying on BMS data. So it's an indication, but it's certainly not an accurate way to look at degradation. You can't just look at that and say, my car's lost X percent. That's why we're doing this test where we're gonna drive the car gently to reduce heat loss from 100% to zero. And, you know, I was thinking, and I haven't quite decided yet, maybe I should do this test at 70 miles an hour so I could do a range test because I range test every EV at 70. Uh, it's a little bit fast to get the best discharge curve because of course, when you're just pulling a lot of current, uh, you can sag the voltage, you can have more heat loss and you may not get the full energy out of the battery pack. Um, but it's actually probably a bit unsafe to go any slower on our highways up here in Northern Colorado going into Wyoming and Nebraska. So yeah, I think we'll probably run 70. We'll get a range test and a degradation test. The thing to keep in mind is they really don't have anything to do with each other. You could drive around at 20 miles an hour, which probably is the better way to do it and get maybe a half a percent better accuracy when it comes to uh, your your full pack energy. Now, a couple things to mention. This car says that when it was new, it had 77.8 kilowatt hours of battery capacity in it. I've ev only ever been able to pull about 74, 75 kilowatt hours out of it when new. And so I'm not sure how much I believe that 77.8. I think that's a hard coded number that was in this pack. Uh, and then since then, Tesla's added this three kilowatt hour buffer situation. So what we're going to do is run it at least down to zero, maybe below, and we'll get a good indication as to how much we've lost. But really the only true way to get true degradation numbers is to drive it from 100% to where it completes all the way down to zero. Now there's been a couple bits of chatter online about Tesla, maybe not logging all of the 
full consumption data here in the UI. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with Bjorn Nyland, he's a great YouTuber out of Norway. I'm sure if you're an EV nerd, you know Bjorn. I've been following him for a while. He dispelled this myth and sort of if the car is in drive and going, it logs all of the energy usage best we can tell. Um, some OEs like to skew the data by looking at motor output instead of battery pack output, but Tesla definitely reads the uh, consumption from the battery pack, as far as I can tell, to the best of my ability, showing full true consumption of the vehicle. And so right now we're, again, about 95% state of charge, charging at 25 kilowatts, which isn't bad. And um, yeah, all looks pretty good. Let's see if there's any other data here to go through before we head out. But I think the thing to keep in mind is the battery is warm. It's a warm day outside. We're gonna cruise along at 70-ish miles an hour. We'll come here until where the car doesn't wanna move. I can do laps in this parking lot forever. And then we'll have a good idea as to how many kilowatt hours we can pull out of this thing. As we're charging, what I'm gonna be attempting to do, of course, is to live stream on our out of spec motoring channel just to have some conversation with the guys. But you'll notice our windshield is cracked. And if you look at the most recent out of spec motoring video, you'll see Alyssa took a rock hit. But what may not have been explained is the roof is also cracked and there's also dog hair in here. So this car needs a detail, it needs a new roof panel, and it needs a new windshield, both of which I'm going to order probably today or tomorrow. And then we can go that way. Just to show you outside the car as well, supercharging here is the handle warm i bet it's gonna be nope <laughs> so that's interesting uh, i've taken the roof racks off you can see we just have this little paint protection film but that's not going to really get in the way and then i've also returned the car to stock we could look at the true efficiency of the stock car uh all these years on with this much more resistance in the battery pack so when we look at battery aging there's a few things that can contribute to this, of course. The first is time. Even if you were to not drive your electric car at all, it would still show some degradation, some aging, just by the fact that it's there. And I find most of this happens actually when new, and then that sort of effect starts to taper off. And we'll, of course, look at all of the Tesla Fi data that we've logged over time, utilizing BMS data on this car to then sort of compare to the results that we find in today's test. The other thing is heat. And I mentioned the cells were getting up to 62 degrees Celsius, that's not good for them either. And then the last thing is just sort of use, full charging it, draining it low. This car has been uh, full charged a ton and it's been drained to zero a ton. You know how we road trip this car, which is fast charging from zero to 50% when it has to take in the most amount of energy. Uh, however, fast charging it at high states of charge is actually worse for it. And this car hasn't seen much of that. So I'd be curious to see. I'm really curious how, how well this car has held up over time. My gut feeling, and maybe it's just winter time, but I really think in the last, I don't know, 30, 40,000 miles, this thing has just taken a turn for the worse. And um, part of that could be because we had the roof box on the car and obviously we had worse consumption, but just felt like the battery wasn't performing its optimal. Although I will say now that it's a warmer day and I really preconditioned the battery, it's charging seemed to be great. We'll have a whole nother video talking about its charging curve. And so DC fast charging, yes, adds more heat. It should degrade the battery faster. Although I've seen Teslas like this one that have been DC fast charged a ton and are still fine, at least according to their owners. Um, you know, it's really hard to, to determine a real world use case. The nice thing is everything on this car has been logged. And so I can at least share with you the experience of this Model 3 performance. And um, one last thing, of course, is this car has been driven hard. It's been on track a ton, uh, but never really for consistent laps. Only a couple times do I think I've ever gotten the battery into red for track mode. You know, I'll go out, run a lap or two, and then come back in, uh, which is sort of the lucky part of, of, again, having access to our own track. But if I was going for track days, like a lot of Tesla owners are these days, you're kind of going out for 20 minutes of hard driving and everything gets red hot. And so, um, yeah, I'm curious as to how much effect that has. Supercharging certainly gets the car hot as well. What I'm doing actually is I've unplugged the car at 96% state of charge. You can hear the fans going. I'm trying to get it to the temperature where it's comfortable. And then I'm going to plug it back in and full charge it all the way to 100%. So, I'll get the live stream going here in a second. We'll let the fans go. I'm the only one at the supercharger and I love to be back filming Tesla videos. It's been too long and uh, I hope our Tesla lover base is still here on this channel because you guys know I'm a big Tesla fan. I think they build some of the best electric cars on the market. I think they hold up really well and by far their drivetrains are better than any other automaker 
in my opinion, just from driving. I'm lucky to drive all the new EVs. So let's let this thing cool down as soon as I see that it's, um, you know, trying to not <laughs> basically uh, uh, cool down itself as hard. We'll plug it back in full charge and hit the road. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but the fans are going crazy. You can see it's active cooling to 32 degrees Celsius, which is really putting about six kilowatts of cooling power in here. So I'm just gonna let this thing do its do its job here and uh, active cool 25. I don't think it'll actually let it get that cold. It's just trying to blast cool these cells probably till they're below 50 degrees Celsius, which I would agree with. And um, we'll take a look at the behavior when they come down to about 50 degrees. My guess is we'll see the cooling ramp down from there. Um, but if we go over here to temps, uh, battery flow, yeah, 29 liters per minute. This thing's cycling as hard as it can. So, yep, let's uh, let us let this thing cool itself down, then we'll full charge it. All right, here we go. We are charged up, of course, same 96%, but you can see our active cooling has now chilled out. It's at 55 degrees C active cool, which means it's fine with the cell temp, like I mentioned, being right around 50 degrees Celsius. So let's plug this thing back in. We have a live stream going. This is Inception here on Out of Spec Motoring. And uh, so let's plug this back in, charge it up to 100%. Now, sometimes if you charge it above 94%, it doesn't like to recharge up. So let's see if it'll let me do this. Earlier software, you used to have to drive it below 94% for it to start, but it says starting to charge. We have the limit to 100%. There we go. Contactors have clicked and we're charging up. So. Let's see what we're doing here. You can see 10 kilowatts ramping up, 25, 30, and it's gonna settle right around there, 30 kilowatts. And uh, yeah, so as soon as we hit 100% state of charge, we're gonna reset the trip meter here, and then we're gonna hit the road. Let's reset Vegas, baby. Let's rename it Dag Test. Nice. And here's our lifetime, by the way, if you're curious, according to the car. We'll go here to deg test. How do I reset this version? Whatever this is, is garbage. Reset deg test, boom. And I'll reset it right before we leave. A lot of helicopter traffic going on out here. I think they're doing some testing. Perfect conditions for it too. I think there's a flight school. Whoa, nice, beautiful day. You can see here it says charging complete, but it's still pulling eight kilowatts, which is odd. Why would it say that? And why would it be trying to warm up the battery pack here? So you can see the battery inlet temperature, where is it? Powertrain inlet is 52 degrees C. Front and rear stator temperatures are warming up. I can hear the pumps going, so it's circulating more coolant, but I can't figure out why it would be doing this. Charging to this level will take longer. It's pulling eight kilowatts. So we're not losing anything. You can see the battery power is adding eight kilowatts. And then the front and rear motor are warming up. I'm just gonna let it do its thing until it totally completes. But uh, I've never seen this before, charging complete and it's still pulling power. You can see the battery heaters have now kicked off. Front and rear power is zero, but cell inlet temperature, let's see, cell temps are about 51, 52 degrees C. So it definitely wanted it a little bit warmer to full charge it. And um, yeah, there we go. We're just uh, ramping down here as normal. We're back to normal behavior. And we have just kicked off charging complete now. Now we're pulling. So what do you say we unplug and we get this show on the road as soon as possible. So let's do this thing. Man, that took forever, almost an hour at 100% state of charge to top charge this thing up. Whoa, supercharger handle, not wanting to stay in its pack and its holder. There we go. I have climate control off right now, which is good because it doesn't log consumption when you're in park. So the first thing we're gonna do is Seatbelt, trip, boom. We're going to degradation test, just reset that again. Reset into drive. And now everything is logged and counting. So let's do this thing up to 70 miles an hour on the highway. And uh, I'll flip this camera around so they can see where we're going. It might be a little bit bouncy for you guys. I'm not sure how the live stream is gonna handle this. But off we go to run it from 100% to zero. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. And we are just jumping onto I-25 North here. We're going to run up into Wyoming and run a loop style back. Again, I'm sort of combining the 70 mile per hour highway range test 
and the uh, consumption test, or I should say the degradation test, into one. They don't necessarily have to be one. And uh, honestly, it might be a half a percent more accurate if we were to run at lower speeds, but everyone drives pretty fast up here, so I think it would be dangerous to go below 70 anyway. So let's do a range and charging test. I have the tire pressure set to factory, of course, and uh, range and charging, range and degradation. Off we go. We got live stream. We got Tesla, scan my Tesla going, and we're cruising. Let's lock it in at 71 is indicated GPS 70. We are at 89% state of charge. So far we've traveled 25 miles, which would indicate a pretty good distance we could go. And we're actually heading uphill a little bit on the way to Cheyenne. The wind conditions today are very minimal, except as we approach Cheyenne, we're going to have a little bit more crosswind and then we're gonna turn east and get a tailwind. I don't mind a tailwind because we'll counteract that with a headwind. I don't like crosswind for testing because there's no way to counteract that. But really amazing views today. Couldn't ask for a more perfect day to go out for a drive. The roads are nice and quiet. We have some good data coming here on the uh, Scan My Tesla app. It's really just a wonderful, wonderful drive. And here we are approaching the Wyoming border. This truck's also approaching us. <laughs> truck lust, but the opposite way. He had some Model 3 lust there. And here we are entering the great state of Wyoming. Beautiful day for a drive. You're now joining us at 75.9% state of charge. We're still on the very high side. The car is indicating 76%. Cruising along here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Beautiful day, of course. Nothing has changed. We now have a little bit of a tailwind, and there is a slight climb to get up here. So 306 watt hour per mile at 70 is to be expected with some elevation gain. If I were to loop back that way, it would probably be a little bit less. But cruising along just fine, enjoying it, enjoying our live stream. And uh, yeah, here, here's some scan by Tesla data for those of you who want to hit pause and take a look. But temperatures are looking great. Cooled down pretty quickly. We're at the 30 five degree temperature range for staters on the motors and the cell temps and it's just sort of circulating the fluid around does a good job keeping the battery warm the outside temperature has dropped a little bit to 53 degrees fahrenheit but i guess you would expect that going north and also it's getting pretty late in the day so i expect the external temperature to only drop throughout this test and um, that should be okay because the car seems to be doing a pretty good job keeping the battery warm. I'll update you at around 50% state of charge. And guys, here just to show you the effect that wind can have on your car, take a look here. This is when we were having a little bit of crosswind and then we jumped on I-80 and you can see we are averaging well below rated efficiency. If I go here and look at the last five miles, 200 watt hour per mile, and that's just because we're getting about a 10 to 15 mile an hour tailwind. Pretty significant, but it's really making this thing uber duber efficient. Look at this efficiency with this tailwind, 184 watt hour per mile over the last 30 miles. That is just insane. And that's the benefits of a tailwind right there, but we'll get the opposite turning around. So I think we're gonna flip it around at about maybe the next exit or the exit after that, because we're gonna have a lot of discharge once that happens. And we're crossing into the next state, the good life, Nebraska. And just because we've had this insane tailwind means we need to turn around and get the headwind back under our belt. So let's turn around now with a little bit more than half state of charge. We're gonna have to burn a bit more juice to go back. So I'm just kicking it off 70 miles an hour right there. Our battery pack temperatures are about 30 degrees Celsius. It's the perfect, perfect, perfect conditions. I'm curious to see how this will work going back uh, with a headwind that we're definitely gonna get nowhere near the efficiency we're getting here. I'm just so blown away. We'll probably be in that 300 range. Wind makes a huge difference here. So uh, let's just flip around here at 60% state of charge. Again, I'll update you with how far we went at 50%, but I guess for now I can also tell you how does this work here, trips. We've gone 101 miles so far. So um, perfect, we're turning around right about 100 miles in. Let's make a left turn here. <laughs> we don't really have to worry about much cross traffic out in the middle of nowhere. That was a complete stop for all of you who are watching. And now we're just gonna gently merge back up on the highway. We really need to limit hard throttle because we don't wanna burn heat loss, right? So it's just gonna be real gentle accelerations onto, uh, onto the highway, heading over that way. We did see one accident with a truck and we did see a brush fire. So hopefully there's no traffic. 
So let's bang a left and let's uh, let's see what this thing can do going into the headwind. It's 53 degrees. Surprised it's staying this warm, to be honest. And the sun will be bright. <laughs> so good luck to our live stream audience staring into the sun for the next little while. Yeah, this windshield, we really need to get this replaced as soon as possible. The crack is definitely spreading. So that's going to be a project very soon. Here we are merging onto the highway. We'll hit 70 miles an hour soon. Truck is moving over for us there in the mirror, which is nice. And we'll see you all along the way. Hey guys, we are now at 50% state of charge. You can see this is about where we turned around and you can see the big uh, headwind increase in consumption. So we're doing mid 300 watt hour per mile as expected. That's why I turned around at about 60% state of charge. Batteries staying nice and warm. So far we've traveled, let's get a trip. This is so dumb. 120 miles so far at 50%. That's looking pretty good, but I think it'll be a little bit worse for the rest of the trip. And here's where that little accident happened where that forerunner crashed into the back of the truck. And a gorgeous sunset heading into Cheyenne, Wyoming right now. Absolutely gorgeous. We're getting hammered with the most amount of headwind that we've seen at the moment. So we're in that 340 watt hour per mile range. We're then gonna jump on I-25 Look at this, it keeps telling me to put my hands on the wheel more than usual. Or then we're gonna jump on I-25 South and uh, see what kind of efficiency we get finishing off the test. And here we are just coming off 70 miles an hour to merge onto I-25 South. Beautiful sunset, gorgeous night for a drive. Temperatures are where they should be. And now we're out of the headwind. So we're out of the harshest point, but it's okay because we had headwind, which means we also had tailwind, counteracts itself plus or minus and it's certainly fine for this test, no issues at all, but wow, is this not a gorgeous, gorgeous sky. Really, uh, really absolutely loving these uh, driving conditions today. And temperature, 48 degrees Fahrenheit, but again, the battery's staying nice and warm in that 30 degree range. Really, if it dips below like 15 degrees Celsius, that's when I start to get, uh, maybe we're losing a little bit of capacity, but this is perfectly fine right here. It's healthy, happy, and couldn't ask for better testing conditions than this. Let's just gently accelerate up to 70 as normal. Uh, we got some gentler accelerator, accelerating people in front of us instead. <laughs> Let's continue. Just another view check so you can enjoy that sunset with me. That is just absolutely stunning off in the distance. We are at 25% state of charge and we have traveled. Let's take a look here, trips. Thank you, Tesla. Got to go for a quick pass. Quick pass over, back on autopilot. Traveled 168 miles at 287 watt hour per mile so far. So let's keep this going. It is absolutely gorgeous outside and uh, really couldn't ask for anything better. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. This is a really, really good test. Here's the data for all of you who want to hit pause and snapshot that. Everything's looking good. Battery's staying nice and warm. We are exactly where we started 202 miles ago, right over there at the supercharger. What I'm gonna do is continue past. We're holding a constant 70 miles an hour, getting a little bit more into dense traffic now on I-25, but it's still not too bad. So we're just gonna continue along and um, yeah, basically loop around down this way until we uh, are at low enough state of charge where I feel that the next loop on the highway wouldn't get us back to the supercharger. So now comes a little bit of the magic and the fun. So we're nearing the end here. You can see the car is predicting a 3% arrival to the charger. We've hit a little bit of dense traffic right here at the end. It looks a little more open on the way down. So it looks like we have a couple miles of well under 70 miles an hour, but trying to keep the speed up as much as possible. Um, still very much a 70 mile an hour test. It's just a couple times here we've had to dip off of 70. I'm not super thrilled about it, but it's okay. And um, this is why when I do my normal 70 mile an hour test, when the range actually matters for like a new EV, I do it up in Wellington where there's no traffic. So we're taking the next exit, flipping around, coming back, and I'll let you know when we end our highway portion. And that's it. We're pulling off the highway here. Let's take a look at our trip. Boom. We've done 225 miles at 70 miles an hour. That's our highway range, not our full range. We're now gonna continue 
at we're about 3% state of charge. It just bumped up to four because I regened a little bit there. And uh, we would not be able to make it down the highway and back up to this charger. So let's regen a little bit. We're now gonna take some back roads. Thankfully, there's plenty of good rural roads around here where we can still keep the speeds relatively high. Um, I'm gonna shoot for 70, but we'll at least try and do, I don't know, 55, 65, something like that. And then we'll run it all the way till where it uh, won't run anymore. So straight on rural roads, here we go. And you can see here we're on some back roads. We're able to cruise at about between 40 and 50 miles an hour. I slowed down there for those railroad tracks, but just nice open cruising. This is uh, wonderful. Roundabouts, no traffic lights. Just gonna keep it moving until she doesn't wanna go anymore. We're at 3% state of charge. It's gonna take a little while. This guy, of course, just gonna fly right out in front of us. But uh, we'll go down here to the right. Never been down here before. Doing some exploring. We are now at 0% state of charge. Have been for a little while. The car thinks we're at 0.47 and uh, 300 watt hours left before we hit that three kilowatt hour buffer. I'm gonna see what happens when we go below that uh, buffered, see what happens, how the car reacts and responds. It's still showing we have plenty of power left. So I have actually zero concern right now. That car feels pretty healthy. Just doing a couple loops around. We're going to get back out on the main road. What I, I just want to make sure we can get below this three kilowatt hour situation. And if the car keeps running, then we're good. But I'd rather run out here if that buffer does turn out to be something weird, which I'm not expecting it to just to happen right by the chargers. So one more loop, another 100 watt hours, which is nothing. That's like a laptop charge. We'll just kind of rip around here a little bit. Again, Model 3 handles so well. We can just carry good momentum through the corners, which is nice. People must think we're crazy doing loops around their parking lot. And they're like, what on earth is this guy doing? And yeah, so let's just see what happens. I guess we'll go out this way. If we run out anywhere around here, it's no issue at all. I can kind of push the car over that way. But it's still showing above that, that buffer. So we've used our full battery pack according to Tesla. We're at 0% state of charge according to the car. Now it should go in theory below with this buffer. And so let me show the viewers here on the live stream. We're at 0% state of charge, but we have this nominal remaining three kilowatt hour buffer that Tesla put in sometime throughout the Model 3's life cycle through software updates. It used to not have that when this car was delivered. And now if I go over here to trips, you can see we've pulled, wow, 64 kilowatt hours out of this thing, which is more than I was expecting, to be honest. So let's see if we can go another little bit before it runs out, see how it does. And I can see we're eating into our buffer here, 2.9 kilowatt hours remaining, pack voltage 297. I think all is good. I'm feeling uh, pretty confident to keep going here without this thing running out. Feel strong, plenty of power, and uh, let's do it. And guys, we have 1.7 kilowatt hours left in the battery pack. And uh, according to the buffer, we're at minus 2% state of charge and we're still going and it's still doing just fine. So let's, uh, yeah, let's check this out. Let's see how far we can go. All right, and we've really eaten into this buffer. It shows we have 0.4 kilowatt hours left. So 400 watt hours. We're at minus 4% state of charge. The live stream's going strong. They're giving us our hopes and wishes to get to the charger and it is lethargic. That's pretty much all we're getting out of it. I don't really wanna slam the throttle down to the floor, but it definitely is noticeably slower on accelerations. The throttles are going real spongy and uh, I think we get it right back to the charger. Yeah, I stayed in it for a while there and it gave us a little bit more, but uh, I think this is it. And I don't think, you know, we're at, at 200 watt hours remaining in the battery pack. I don't think, you know, obviously we're not getting another kilowatt hour out of it. So better to just end it here. And I think that's about as accurate as a test, honestly, as we could get. This was perfect conditions, really amazing. There's another Model 3 over here at the charger. One more loop around the parking lot though, just for good measure. What do you guys think? Just for good measure. Let's just do it. <laughs> just for fun. Just because it shows we have 200 watt hours left in there. We're just adding 247 miles and 30 feet. I actually don't know how far we've gone. Yeah, 246. And that's it. We're at minus 4.38% state of charge. We have 200 watt hours at the bottom of the battery pack. 
and let's plug this thing in, shall we? And we have arrived to the Loveland Supercharger. Thankfully, you can see the car is completely, completely out of juice. Again, 200 watt hours remaining on Scan My Tesla. We've done 246 miles and we've used 67 kilowatt hours at an average efficiency of 271 watt hour per mile. I am so impressed with those results. It's a perfect test. The battery pack is still warm. It retained its temperature. You really couldn't ask for a better degradation test than that. Maybe other than instead of just letting it sit at 55 miles an hour instead of 70. So let's plug it in. Let's see what kind of juice we can pull at low state of charge. This will be really interesting and uh, we'll get our charging. <laughs> Made it here with literally less than nothing in the pack, minus 4% state of charge. Don't freak out on me now. Let's communicate car. There we go, contactors clicked. Let's sit inside here and let's see what we're gonna do. So here's the Teslafy data. Here's the car already up to 70 kilowatts, 80 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts on plug-in, 107. Wow. And again, 0.2 kilowatt hours remaining, minus 4% state of charge, and we're adding juice to this thing. That is awesome. Well, now it's time to crunch some numbers. And I first wanted to pull up Teslafy, and we'll go into this. I'm actually gonna take you through all of the Teslafy data in a future video, everything we've done with the car. But here you can see literally the map of everywhere this car has been, pretty much crisscrossing the US. Now this is not everywhere we've been driving because of course we've taken a ton of EV road trips and other cars. That's just this car in just over two years. Uh, so you can see up here it has 106,599 miles. I did the degradation test about 500 miles ago, but I actually wanted to give it some time to see if the car would recalibrate. Now every single charging session, aside from a handful that were done outside of cell coverage, has pretty much been done uh, here, uh, logged, completely logged in the system. And so you can see we've added AC charging, we've pulled through the plug about 18 megawatt hours logged and we've done about 20 megawatt hours of dc charging and so you can see there is a couple and then of course there's another add 600 kilowatt hours to dc charging just because of chatamo and you can see there's a couple little losses just from being out of sync compared with the ac and dc charge totals on scan my tesla in the car but it's pretty dang accurate. And these are all the places it's been plugged in in the US. How about that? That is pretty cool. But this isn't really what we want to see. Um, I mean, I guess it is interesting to know that more than half of this car's charging has been for DC charging. Um, and that kind of makes sense. I mean, I charge it home as much as possible. But again, it's our road trip car. So that's what we use it for. Let's go to the battery report. And Teslify basically relies on BMS data logged after the completion of every charging session uh, to give us a good idea of the battery pack. And this is why I say you can't rely on BMS to look at degradation. You'll see a lot of people in their Tesla apps be like, what's your full charge range? And it honestly doesn't mean anything because look, you'll see these huge dips occasionally these huge peaks and valleys and the car isn't ever gaining any range it's just the bms recalibrating you can see here for example uh, we had a huge jump on the blue line as our car a huge jump in um, in battery retention over this time and the green lines fleet average and so it's not totally you know tesla will calculate it differently for different software updates and things like that that's why the only true way to do a degradation test is to drive it from full until it doesn't move anymore and log how many kilowatt hours you've got out of it now this car has been logged literally since before I pulled it off of the dealership, dealership showroom, delivery center, driveway. So everything has been logged. So our starting range was 310.28 miles. That's what the car was advertised with. We have it. Our current range is 272 miles. And so it says it's lost about 12% state of charge. Or I, what am I saying? It's five o'clock, 4.30 in the morning right now. I'm actually about to fly to Alabama to go ride in the EQS SUV, but I wanted to get this video out today for you guys. So I woke up early, came over here. Excuse me for being a little out of it. Um, it says there's a 12% loss. Now what I'm not sure of, and maybe one of you can let me know, is does that number include the new three kilowatt hour buffer at the bottom of the battery pack? My guess is Yes, it does, would be my guess. 
Um, so anyway, when basically if I go to the app and I full charge my car, it should show 272.98 miles in the app at this current moment. Now, if we look at our actual data from the test, let's crunch some numbers. New, the vehicle had, um, what, what, what would we say it had? About 75-ish kilowatt hours. I know the car says 77, but I think it was roughly about 75. I think that starting number was hard-coded in there. I was never able to pull more than 75 kilowatt hours out of there. My first degradation test, which I can't find the footage for, I actually pulled 74 kilowatt hours, but I remember sitting there for a while. So I'm gonna go with 75, because I think it was like 74.9 is probably what I pulled out of it. And so let's crunch numbers from our actual testing going off of a 75 kilowatt hour usable battery pack assumption. Again, I got 74 and a bit, um, you know, from new. So let's just say we had 75 kilowatt hours and we pulled about 67 kilowatt hours out of the car on this one. I have the number right here, indicated 67 kilowatt hours. So, you know, a plus or minus one or two percent because I don't know if that was on the high or low end of 67 kilowatt hours, but I think it was on the high end, but let's just go uh, 67 kilowatt hours. So we'll do, 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 do. Okay, so according to those numbers, the car has lost uh, 11%. According to TeslaFi, it's lost 12%. And I would say that's fairly accurate. That seems to be right on point because again, I, I don't know exactly if it was you know, we could be on the, the high side, we could you know, be at seven, 67 kilowatt hours, 68 kilowatt hours today that we're able to pull out of it, or when it was new, it could have been 75 kilowatt hours. Anyway, um, we're, we're plus or minus a percent, basically, is what I'm trying to hone in on. And so the car has lost in 105, 106,000 miles about 11 or 12% capacity, which is, really not bad. Also, you can take a look over here. This is how many times it's been charged to each percentage. So for example, it's been charged to 100% 30 times, 99% 10 times. And I try to never full charge and leave my car there. Even though we give it a hard life, I try and take care of the battery as much as possible. So 90% charges happened very often. 80% charges happen very often. 70% charges. Yep. And what I've been doing recently is like when I leave the car sit, I just try to leave it between 30 and 50% state of charge for long-term storage, um, which is cool. Actually, when this car was new, um, I, had, I knew some friends at Tesla, so they logged into the car while it was like in transport and it left the factory with about 75% state of charge. So it never sat full ever. Uh, so this battery I've known and there goes the lights. This battery I've known the condition of for its entire life. And with the lights going out and I have to leave to catch a flight, there you go, 11 or 12% capacity lost. We also got the 70 mile an hour test in there and that low to mid 200, about 230 miles at 70 miles an hour, which is more than I was expecting. I have to say this is really um, impressive stuff here, this 11 or 12% loss. I don't know if our plan is to keep the car we definitely aren't driving it as much, so it's going to be a long time before it ever hits 200,000 miles. I see no point in selling it. It's really rock solid for us. It's been good. So um, we'll have more updates coming. I'll take you on a full tour of Teslafy in a future video and show you everything we've done with it, all the software updates, everything like that. But for now, there's your number, 11 or 12% loss. I'm running. Thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. I know it was a nerdy one, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.